All right, welcome back for chapter three, exponents and roots. And today we're discussing lesson five, squares and square roots. Before we get started with this lesson, I think it's really, really important to talk about perfect squared numbers. If we talk about this and understand this, it's going to make the entire lesson easier. So let's talk about it. So perfect squared numbers, what they are, would be like one squared. One squared is the same thing as one times one, right? Which is one. Two squared is the same thing as two times two, which is four. So one is a perfect squared number. Four is a perfect squared number. Then we can just keep going. Three squared is the same thing as nine. Four squared is the same thing as four times four, which is 16. Five squared is the same thing as five times five, which is 25. Six squared is the same thing as six times six, which is 36. Seven squared is the same thing as seven times seven, which is 49. 8 squared is the same thing as 8 times 8, which is 64. 9 squared is the same thing as 9 times 9, which is 81. 10 squared is the same thing as 10 times 10, which is 100. 11 squared is the same thing as 11 times 11, which is 121. 12 squared is the same thing as 12 times 12, which is 144. 13 squared is the same thing as 13 times 13, which is 169. 14 squared is the same thing as 14 times 14, which is 196, and we're going to keep going. 15 squared is the same thing as 15 times 15, which is 225. 16 squared is the same thing as 16 times 16, which is 256. 17 squared is the same thing as 17 times 17, which is 289. 18 squared is the same thing as 18 times 18, which is 324. And 19 squared is the same thing as 19 times 19, which is 361. And lastly, 20 squared is the same thing as 20 times 20, which is 400. So these right here are all perfect squared numbers. 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81, 100, 121, 141, 144, 169, 196, 225, 256, 289, 324, 361, 400. Okay, so it's really, really important that you memorize these numbers um, because it's going to make everything easier. So on that thought of memorization, we're going to practice this one, two, three, four, five times. So I just want to demonstrate what the first practice looks like. Okay. So we're just going to start and we're going to go one through 20, just like we did. That is one practice. Okay. So let's, let's try it. Here we go. On your mark, get set, go. So one squared is one. 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, 5 squared is 25, 6 squared is 36, 7 squared is 49, 8 squared is 64, 9 squared is 81, oh, got to go up here, 10 squared is 100, 11 squared is 121, 12 squared is 144, 13 squared is 169, 14 squared is 196, 15 squared is 225, 16 squared is 256, 17 squared is 289, 18 squared is 324, 19 squared is 361, and lastly, 20 squared is 400. Okay, so that is practice one. So you are going to do this practice two, practice three, practice four, practice five. Do the whole thing, okay? And I'm going to give you my friend the pause dragon. That's reminding you to pause your device. Go ahead and finish complete practice two, practice three, practice four, practice five. It's so important that you get these into your mind, into your memory, and then it will make everything so much easier. Okay, so I'm going to give you some time. Go ahead and pause. Practice those out. And um, when you get back, then we'll go over some problems. So I'm going to be looking at these in class. So make sure I see practice two, practice three, practice four, practice five. All right, go ahead and pause. We'll do all those practices, and then I'll see you in a little bit.
All right, we're back. Let's go ahead. Um, hopefully you did all those practices. Uh, let's see, practice five. How about you just take out a, a sheet of paper and we'll race. Okay, let's see if you can do it faster than I can. I'm gonna write it right here. Okay, do you have a piece of paper? Are you ready? Or just do the back side of the paper or do it up here. Right, you can do it right here. Let's race, ready? On your mark, get set, go. See if you can beat me. One squared equals one, two squared equals four, three squared equals nine, four squared equals 16, five squared equals 25, six squared equals 36, seven squared equals 49, eight squared equals 64, nine squared equals 81, 11 squared equals 121, 12 squared equals 144, 13 squared equals 169, 14 squared equals 196, 15 squared Four hundred. Did you beat me or did I win? Okay. <laughs> well, hopefully you beat me. If not, keep practicing until you can beat me. All right. So let's look at example one. Okay. Example one says finding the positive and negative square roots. Wait, that's not what I want. I want this one first. Okay. Sorry about the confusion. Algebra uses inverse operations. So we've talked a lot about inverse operations. So what are some inverse operations? So what's the inverse operation of addition, right? It's a subtraction and subtraction is addition, right? Those are inverse operations. We've also talked about multiplication and division, right? Those are inverse operations. But in this section, we're going to be learning about some other inverse operations operations and that is if you have squared numbers the square root is the inverse operation of the squared numbers those are inverse operations and the higher you go in math the more inverse operations you learn so this is the one that we're going to discuss today but later on you'll talk about if a number is cubed the inverse operation of that is a cube root those are inverse operations or if you have a number raised to the fourth root, no, the fourth power, the fourth root is the inverse operation. And it really just keeps going from there. If we have x to the fifth, guess what's the inverse operation of x to the fifth? Yeah, the fifth root, and you put a little five there. It's called the index. And we could keep going x to the sixth. The inverse operation of that would be the sixth root or one day you'll to get into trig and you'll learn about cosine and the inverse operation of cosine is the inverse of cosine and then it's kind of like that. Or you'll learn about sine and the inverse. Ooh, 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 ooh. Where's my friend? Where is my friend? Here's my friend, I wrote the wrong thing. It would be sine inverse and those are all inverse operations and the higher and higher you go in mathematics, the more inverse operations that you learn. This is a fun one. It's called the natural log. I always like it. And the inverse of it is e to the x. Those are inverse operations. So the higher you get in mathematics, you learn all about these inverse operations in order to figure out what the variable is. So today we are talking about this one. x squared and square roots. So square roots, let me make sure you can see this. Okay, square roots are the inverse operations of squared numbers. Okay, every positive number has two square roots. So every positive number has two square roots. One positive and one negative. Um, this radical symbol indicates the positive or principal square root. This symbol with that negative in front of the radical sign, that indicates the negative square root. 
um, you can use the plus or minus symbol like this to indicate both square roots. So let's say we have, um, let's take this square root of 16. Now 16 is a positive number, that means we're gonna have two square roots, one positive and one negative. Now, 16, we know that that's a perfect squared number, right? So instead of writing 16, I know that 16 is the same thing as four squared. So this is the same thing as the square root of four squared because four squared is 16. Now this square root and this squared, they're inverse operations. So what I like to do is they like to cancel each other out. But there was this game back in the day, it was called Fruit Ninja. So I feel like the square root and the square, they fruit ninja each other out and they cancel each other out. And what you're left with is four. Well, really, plus and minus four because there's a plus one and there's a negative one for the square root of 16. All right, let's go ahead and look at some problems. So that's what it's talking about for the plus and the minus. Now these first ones, we're gonna kind of do the positive one and the negative one um, independently of each other. So let's look here. Um, example one, finding the positive and negative square roots of a number. Find the two square roots of each number. Okay, so 81, we're going to find, right, this is the positive root of 81, and this means the negative. Well, 81, that's one of those perfect square numbers because we know that 81 is the same thing as 9 squared, right? So I'm going to write this, the square root of 9 squared what happens is square root and square cancel each other out because they're inverse operations and we're left with positive nine. Down here, right, there's that negative square root. We know that 81 is the same thing as nine squared. The square root and the square cancel each other out, but now we're left with negative nine. So the two numbers here would be positive and negative nine. Those are the two answers. All right, let's talk about one. Now one, okay, so this is the positive root and this is the negative root. So we know that one is the same thing as one squared, right? So the square root and that square cancel each other out and we're left with positive one. And then we also know that, um, oh, this is a negative. One squared is the same thing as one because one times one is one. The square root and the square cancel each other out and we're left with negative one. So their two answers would be plus and minus one. Okay, uh, how about you try these ones right here, C and D. Where is my friend? Here's my friend, the pause dragon. I need to pause your device. Go ahead and figure those out. When you get done, press play and we'll talk about them together. All right, see you in a bit. Okay, let's see how you did. All right, so we know 144 is a perfect squared number because it's the same thing as 12 squared, right? So this square root and that squared cancel each other out and we're left with 12, that's the positive root. And then this is going to refer to the negative root. So we have negative, the square root of 144 is the same thing as 12 squared. The square root and the square cancel each other out and we're left with negative 12. I don't know if I can fit it in there. So our two answers would be plus and minus 12. So if you got that one right, great job. Okay, let's look here at the square root of 49, that's the positive one, and then the negative square root of 49, that's a negative one. So um, we know that 49 is a perfect squared number, which is the same thing as seven squared. So I'm gonna write the square root of seven squared, right? And then down here, I'm gonna write negative square root of seven squared. What happens is square root and square root cancel each other out. I'm left with seven. The square root and the square root cancel each other out. I'm left with negative seven. Negative seven, and my answer is plus and minus seven. Perfect. Okay, let's come down here. So we are going to be finding the positive and negative square roots, right, of a number. So that means we're gonna go the square root of 100, that's gonna be the positive one, and negative square root of 100, that's gonna be the negative one. So we know 100 is a perfect squared number, which is awesome because it's the same thing as 10 squared. All right, and then we just fruit ninja it, the square root and the square root are inverse operations, so they cancel each other out, we're left with 10. 
and this square root and squared cancel each other out, so we're left with negative 10. And our answer is plus or minus 10. Woohoo! All right, I want you to try F only, okay? We'll do G and H together, but I want you to try F. So where is my friend? Here's my friend, the pause dragon. Remind you to pause your device. Go ahead and work it out. When you get done, press play. Okay, we'll talk about it. All right, let's see how you did. Okay, so 225, you should know that that is the same thing as 15 squared. And I just love it that we have these numbers memorized because it's so much easier. Okay, so square root of 15 squared, that's going to be the positive one. And then it also has a negative one, right? Oh, wait, I was supposed to write 225 there. That's okay. Where's my friend? It's right here. Fixes all my mistakes. You're such a good friend. Okay, 225, that's the positive one. And then this is the negative one I got ahead of myself. Okay, so 225 is the same thing as 15 squared. And this, oh my goodness is the same thing as negative 15 squared. The square root and the square cancel each other out, we're left with 15, and the square root and square root cancel each other out, we're left with negative 15, so our answer is plus or minus 15. If you got that right, yo, good you must show you did a wonderful job. All right, woo, we have a fraction. Okay, it's getting intense up in here. Okay, so if we're gonna take the roots of this, it's not a big deal, we can do this. Okay, so when we do this, taking the square root of the entire thing is like taking the square root of each individual thing. So instead of one problem, we basically have two problems. Okay, so this is the positive and then this would be the negative. One, so we just, we know that 49, is, what's that the same as? That's the same thing as seven squared, right? And 25 is the same thing as 5 squared. And then down here we have our negative, and it's the same thing. 49 is the same thing as 7 squared. And this is the same thing as 5 squared. And then what do we have? Inverse operation. The square root and the square cancel each other out. We're left with 7 on top. The square root and the square cancel each other out. We're left with 5 on the bottom. This square root and square cancel each other out. We're left with negative 7. And then the square root and square cancel each other out, and we're left with 5. So those are our two answers, plus and minus 7 over 5. Okay, now it is your turn, ladies and gentlemen. I want you to go ahead and try this one right here. 16 over 81 and find the two roots involved there. Here's my friend, the pause dragon. Remind you to pause your device. Go ahead and work out H. When you get done, press play and we'll talk about it. All right, see you in a bit. Okay, so we know, oh, I don't have very much space. That when we take the, we're trying to look at the square root of this, we can take the square root of the top and the bottom. So square root of 16 over the square root of 81. And then the negative one would be negative square root over 16 over square root of 81. We know 16 is a perfect squared number because it is the same thing as 4 squared. 81 is also a perfect squared number because it's the same thing as 9 squared. It's so nice when they are perfect squared numbers. This is a negative, the same thing, 4 squared over square root of 9 squared. And then just a lot of fruit ninja. The square root and square cancel each other out. Square root and square cancel each other out. We're left with a positive four ninths. Then down here, the square root and square cancel each other out. Square root and square cancel each other out. We're left with a negative four ninths, which means our answer is plus or minus four ninths. So if you got that one right, yo, thank you, Masha. You did a wonderful job, and I will see you in a little bit for example two. I'm trying to move this paper up for night.